thank you uh, for getting me my and pleasure. two of uh, my students to come here and we are very happy to be down here and see a, a very different school. And I thought that um, I'll start by showing just two or three projects that we did uh, at the Home School in the Department of Space and Time. Uh, which is the faculty where me and my colleagues work uh, on the professor called Kurt Peterson. Um, I would, uh, from my homepage, uh, show three different uh, projects uh, that have been taught by me and my colleagues. The first one is, um, is actually has a link to the Carter School because the, the student who did this, just of the, the PhD, is actually a student from Graz, which I had uh, last year. And uh, when we're doing some, uh, some pretty uh, different stuff uh, than what they do in class ordinary, I think. Uh, when I've shown these uh, three projects very briefly, I would uh, talk about three concepts that are important to our discourse in Copenhagen. And uh, I would uh, show examples from the movies instead of uh, examples from architecture. I think. That can sometimes be a good idea, especially when it's about space and time, but right? there's a concept from cinema that can enlighten some of our architectural practice. Um, last year we got the idea in Copenhagen uh, to make a project which is almost as insane as the Potosinino uh, site. We thought to cover the whole uh, graveyard, uh, or the whole, uh, sorry, the whole, um, the whole uh, Railroad yards leading into Copenhagen, which is one big wound, and actually do the same stuff, which is, you can see in Barcelona, where it's simply covered. So we made the assignment to cover the railroad yards, which is a huge expanse of uh, 3 kilometers long and uh, 1.2 kilometers wide at, at the widest point. And of course, built with all kinds of infrastructure and made as an <coughs> artificial landscape. Uh, and I'm uh, simply going to run through, run through some of the drawings here that were done by one of the students in order to uh, to make some different concepts for this covering of the railroad gas. And here you can see we have uh, some very picturesque, uh, very analog. Uh, stuff mixed with digital stuff and uh, and uh, ending up in, the, in what is uh, on the diagrammatic section which is uh, also uh, starting as a diagrammatic plan and then uh, moving into some diagrams of different relations of programs and ending up in actually what is a more conventional uh, uh, plan image and then what has been modified and redrawn and uh, done into some, some different uh, sections here and into some uh, views which are of course done in uh, the 3D model uh, what uh, is in the thing which is important to us is that we are living we think that, uh, as you can see, talked about yesterday, we're living in a continuity, a new kind of continuity where all our gadgets and all our informational structures is producing a, a new nature, a new continuity, and uh, that is, of course, a global situation. Uh, it's almost being, like being on the inside of a sphere where you uh, meet yourself and, and, and repeat the same endless loop. So uh, we're we're interested in, the, in that kind of situation and uh, we are uh, we're sure that uh, in order to, to deal with this, instead of having all this kind of sustainable uh, ideas, we would uh, always try to make a global situation in, in a local city. Um, of course, this uh, idea of continuity, uh, this is uh, another student, but the same assignment, the same uh, we wrote uh, open the room to the city that, that uh, we have to cover in some way. Um, 
the idea of continuity is of course interesting because it also points to the fact that there's a process and that there's a before and after. So that there's a both a spatial uh, situation but also a time-based situation. And uh, let's see these points uh, are, you could say, pretty typical of, of uh, how we would start a project that we would derive from a cartography that would both deal with the ordinary uh, information but also information of a more flow and dynamic uh, character and deal with different relations of, uh, of uh, urban uh, situations and uh, And from these kind of drawings, we would, uh, in, you would say, actually we would develop or we would, um, uh, expose, of course, uh, we would develop and expose the project from this kind of uh, points uh, and into what is uh, simply a, a basic way of structuring things in different layers and with different information and with different focuses and into uh, a plan that, uh, that could be conceived like this. Um, I just want to show one last project which is uh, from <coughs> another colleague of mine called uh, you and uh, which is in another side in Berlin along the Spray River and which is uh, say an incision into uh, a large complex of, uh, of leftover industrial uh, buildings from, from the former east and uh, formed into a uh, uh, city for, for uh, moving media arts. Um, and again, you have the diagrammatic cartographic uh, drawing, different drawings here that are developed and exposed into ideas of, of sections and into uh, what is actually becoming a split between sections and views and a, a way to handle the difference between uh, the old structure and the new. Um, and into slices, like this, slices of sequences, and of course it's uh, for a cinematic uh, compound, uh, so this idea of the sequence has been, uh, is of course of major importance in, 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 in uh, these uh, section slice views. And here are some, uh, some more, uh, some uh, notions of uh, architectural components that will go into the project. And let's see. this is becoming an actual script or an actual plan of the project and uh, evolving uh, into some uh, thought of sections and, 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 uh, and actually a kind of view of, of some of the elements of the project. So, this is a way of handling an extreme complex situation and, and actually drawing yourself into the, into the project. So um, one of the basic uh, ideas of this is of course that the drawing is uh, I just want to, uh, the drawing is um, a way to think. It is not an illustration or a representation of an idea. The whole um, thinking, the whole reflection, the whole uh, layers of information are kept in, in, in the same level, in a, almost like a degree zero level. Okay. Uh, so um, that was uh, three different projects, and now I would um, say quit this, and I would uh, try to describe three concepts that we find uh, extremely relevant, and that would be the concept of the event concept of diagram and the concept of topology. Um, of course, as uh, Lake also um, said, 
yesterday, the concept of topology, the concept of this new continuity is, uh, is, um, is also um, a control idea, it's also a self-organizing idea, so, uh, so uh, when you deal with topology, you also have to uh, discuss how you make cuts in this continuity. How do you make a cut in something which is defined by the first topic? Uh, that's this is a problem that we are all facing in our ordinary lives and in our practice. But I would start with the idea of the event. Um, the event. The event is interesting because it was not there before, and when it occurs, it does not stop. Uh, so it's a different way of imagining the, the universe. It's not a, a universe which has a theological uh, basis, which is ending up in a perfect state or in a terrible state. It is neither a cyclical universe which will repeat itself with everything that has already been said or be said again on others. It's an open-ended, risk universe. Um, and for this uh, idea, the event is interesting, and not only as a technical thing, but also as an artistic thing. And um, I will try to uh, show you uh, an example of an event which is taking place inside a piece of art, because we're doing art, and because we're interested in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, um, putting the most important issues into works of art that could be architecture or film. Uh, when I'm showing you the film example, it is simply because I don't want you to, uh, to think about uh, the forms, but for instance, if I would show you an example of an architecture of the event, it could be by uh, the cemetery in Vega by Karl Starpa, but I, I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to show you uh, 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 an example from an Italian film by Roberto Rossellini called The Argument in Italia. And the event is uh, characterized here on, on a lot of levels, but I could name five of them. The first is the actual shooting. The actual shooting uh, for the Adrian Tire was done in a different way that we would do at that time in, in the forties, in the late forties. It was done on location and it was done with uh, uh, equipment and which uh, enabled the, the director to actually uh, be more, um, how do you say, um, informal uh, in his uh, breakup, in his uh, decoupage, in his way of planning the shooting, uh, so he could decide uh, from day to day what to shoot. Uh, that's, a, that's a basic level. Um, the, 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 the consequence of this is that uh, he could go out to Pompeii with his actors and he could actually shoot some scenes when in Pompeii they were excavating uh, the bodies of uh, two people burned 1,000, uh, 2,000 years ago. And I'll show you the clip where this is happening. Uh, of course, this is uh, as an event in the, in, in the film. It, uh, it, has a, uh, it has a big uh, influence on the film, on the, uh, how do you say, the, the, the tangent, uh, where, where the, the dramatic chain, the ta tangent, where we are actually seeing a, a married couple, uh, we're following them, throughout the film and their relationship is slowly degrading and this event is turning things around. Um, this of course from, a, from an overall perspective has, um, has, a, has an importance for the structure of the film but it also has an uh, importance on the history of film because the film in itself is a turning point for the whole history of the cinema. Of course, some people might uh, argue that the first modern film was made in the US by the world, but uh, in my uh, understanding, uh, the Adria Italia is one of the first, uh, is, is the first really modern film that was made because it's made in a totally different way and it has changed uh, all the parameters of the classical film. So it's also an event in the history of film. Uh, now, when you see this and you look at the documentary situation of the excavation, of course, it's also an event in the history of our culture because it is reminding you uh, what happened in Pompeii 2,000 years ago. It's reminding you what happened in, in our culture 60, 70 years ago when the whole of the cinema uh, were, were changed by uh, the event of, uh, of the 
view of realism and, and actually we've made a whole different kind of narrative structure that, uh, that we're still using, which is the modern structure. Um, and in, in this way, you could say, uh, instead of uh, going on about this event, I, I, I'll say, you know, and the event is defined by a transversal, where you have the event changing stuff at different levels, uh, at five different levels, as I could just account for here. Um, and I'm just going to show you uh, uh, this clip. And I'm sorry, but we'll have to do the sound from the mic. So, uh,
say, for the difference that film and architecture can share. As Fanny Cash has said, the, the picture is a reduction of, uh, <coughs> of the monument. Uh, so the, actually the frame of the picture is, uh, is similar to the monument of which it is a reduction. So this idea that the frame and what is outside of the frame is in the moment of the outer field, that is uh, actually this working of the frame, the frame as uh, the framing of the live world, or the frame as the framing of a set of information which has a context, an architectural context is one thing, but in film the uh, context is also how you read the image. Um, this uh, could be seen as a diagram of uh, this working of the frame, which is uh, actually, uh, you could say, which is uh, what would link, in my opinion, would link architecture and film together, because, of course, architecture is also four dimensionally, because it's uh, perceived by a body, which is moving in the body of the building, and, of course, uh, cinema is uh, also three-dimensional, because you can see this whole the construction we're sitting in, which is also, which is actually resembling the structure in the place of state of the cave image. We have the light, we have the producers, we have the slave sitting fixed, as Hitchcock said, looking at the illusion. Uh, so, so this uh, spatial installation, which Plato, uh, uh, well, one of the first to describe, is actually uh, the spatial, uh, uh, the spatial construction of cinema. Um, now I'm just going to show you this uh, small clip and, and I'm going to comment a little bit uh, more on it afterwards. Let's see. Mm.
altså en altså, altså young woman, and Tarkovskis mother, his real mother, in a documentary sense, as an old woman walking with uh, two small children, him and, and, and his sibling, I guess, uh, there in the same tape, which would be impossible in a Euclidean sense, but because they never in the same frame, in Tarkovsky's universe it's possible. So here you have an Euclidean uh, universe, meaning a topological universe, uh, where both things are actually in the same tape, but never in the same frame. Uh, so um, I would uh, close this uh, small lecture or, or presentation by showing you with, uh, this clip.
okay, um, thanks a lot. That's actually it. Now there's going to be a five minute break because we have to load some of the input stuff. Further information, because in this beautiful movies that we have seen, in uh, John of Arc of Dryden, you remember Britney, Professor Britney talked about Antonella Tok two days before. The actor that uh, brings the travel notice to John of Arc that she will be killed is exactly Antonella Tok, a young Antonella Tok that was involved by Dryden to take this. Uh, Fundamental part in the movie. And this was very young, and the drawing of Antonio Nardo that was shown before by Professor Britti was uh, regarded uh, the life of Antonio Nardo that was in a psychiatric hospital at the end of his life. And uh, this is a big transformation, you see how beautiful place and dramatic. And uh, it's not a case that uh, Antonio Nardo was. Uh, the inventor of the, the theater of Trujillo. And I invite you to have some other information about it. Thank you.